Hello everyone, welcome to Sweet Tomato Vine Homestead. I'm Linda and y'all, it is the same day. It is June 20th and I am in the kitchen now. I'm preparing to uh, put my harvest that I just got out of the garden, I'm gonna put it away. So what I have, I have some water boiling on the stove and that is for the squash that I am going to be uh, blanching. I have to blanch the squash. That is one thing that I blanch. I put it in Ziploc bags after I blanch it cool it in uh, cold water and then uh, dry it, kind of, you know, pat it dry. And then put them in my plastic freezer bag. Make sure they're freezer bags. They say freezer bags. Don't try to use the storage bags for freezing. So I'm going to, um, I got my harvest over here. Let me show you. Y'all excuse the window. I'm still getting uh, the kitchen worked on and haven't put the blinds back up yet. This is what the harvest is looking like. I got it all piled in the sink. And these peppers, as I told you all, these peppers will just get over to the side. They were just, uh, uh, after being uh, washed, they will just get over here. I will put them over here and I will just drain the peppers, pat them dry, and then I will be putting them in my freezer. And I used to blanch my okra but I found that it causes my okra to get very slimy. So I no longer blanch my okra. I am going, I've washed the okra because I have been having some, uh, ants have been on my okra pods in some cases. And putting them over here, I'm going to let them dry. And then I am going to freeze them just like this. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I will cut this okra up and freeze it but today i'm just going to freeze it just like this now i'm not telling you that this is the way that you should do yours if you want to blanch your okra if you have figured a way to blanch it and not uh have that extra sliminess because we do not like the extra sliminess of uh, you know we don't want it super slimy we know that the um okra is going to be slimy because that's what okra is okra is slimy so, but, but I don't want it to be just, you know, so, so slimy because I have uh, tried to go through that extra process of blanching it. So I am just going to be putting my peppers and my okra are two of the things that are going to just uh, get up here and not get, I'm going to, I'm going to cut these bells up. Y'all, I went back out there. I still can see that big green bell pepper. I have not been able to get to it because of the direction that I was trying to go. Now this one right here, I'm gonna to have to check it out to make sure that there's not anything in it, but if there's not anything in it, we'll just remove this part and it still will get uh, frozen. So I'm going to just put all of these. Now this is some squash. So the squash is one thing is that I am going to be uh, blanching. Uh, I'm thinking that I'm probably fixing to Cook this eggplant. Probably gonna have that uh, for my lunch. But these uh, these squashes will definitely all be uh, put into this boiling hot water that I have over to the side. So that is the first thing I'm gonna do is to go ahead and get that blanching process taken care of and get these um, squash into the freezer. But I did not mention the tomatoes. The tomatoes will not be, uh, I will not do anything else to these tomatoes. These right here, because I have some appointments today and I have some people, uh, the guy that's working on my kitchen, he will be coming back and I need to go ahead and get finished, get out of the kitchen. I am not going to peel these tomatoes. Sometimes I will drop these into my boiling water, peel them, and then I will uh, put them into zipper bags, into freezer bags, and put them into the freezer. But sometimes I just will wash them and drain them, dry them off, and then put them into the uh, freezer bags like that. And then they will still be fine when I am ready to make my sauces. 
So it just depends on what I've got to do. Sometimes I do like to go ahead and have them completely prepared by uh, removing those skins and putting them into the uh, freezer. Some of them I am just going to, some of the ones that are cracked on top, I'm just going to leave them on top of the, now this one, this one I'm going to, see, I'm, this one needs, I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to leave it so that the rest of this can go ahead and get uh, right. And then once it all gets right, then I'll go ahead and I, I remove this spot. There is nothing in this. It has just got a little, uh, maybe sun scalded. So I am going to, it's not completely right here, you can see. I'm going to turn it upside down, leave it on the counter, not in the kitchen, because I, as I said, some work is going to be done in here, but I will, um, got some leaves that's standing in here. I will go ahead and let it ripen before I cut it. I won't cut it and leave it on the counter to ripen, but I'm going to turn it upside down. That And then what I do to them is I put a box or something over them. Sometimes I have a small box that I keep, and I think I gave it away with some vegetables in it to someone. But I um, keep a small box handy so I can cover my tomatoes. And that is to uh, keep anything that could have gotten in the house, a gnat or a fly or anything like that, to keep them from uh, lighting on my, landing on my fruits. I don't want any, I don't even want a mosquito or none of those pests to uh, come in and and gravitate to my tomatoes because uh, those little pests will, gnats and all those, they will come in and they will uh, go to your, to your fruits. This one has a hole underneath it, under the bottom, right at the uh, blossom. So I don't know if this is blossom end rot or if something has gotten in it, but I will also put this one with the other one that I am going to be uh, waiting on and they will all be turned upside down on the counter to ripen. This one has some uh, nastiness going on right here. I don't know. This is a, a nice size tomato, but it does not look good at the bottom. And the top has gotten some cracking on it, but I'm gonna put it in here and let it sit up because sometimes when these uh, tomatoes look like that, there's really nothing wrong with them. They just have gone through the cracking and they may have got some discoloration, but I don't wanna throw a whole tomato away just because it has a few uh, imperfections. I wanna make sure, I wanna check it out good to make sure that if, you know, if there is something wrong with it. So. This one has some cracking going on with it. I don't see anything in it. And this one has been uh, a candidate on my list that I have been really thinking about slicing and going ahead and putting in a tomato sandwich and mainly because it has that uh, amount of ripeness that I want. So I, am, I still have not eaten anything. I came in, I wanted to go ahead and get this um, all taken care of before I have to get out of the kitchen. My son is outside. Um, he is power washing the house. So that is the noise that you'll hear in the background. Okay, so I have some carrots at the bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and get started on it. Cause a lot of this stuff is gonna be really fast to so just go ahead, put it, uh, throw it in the uh, freezer bag and Put it in the freezer but these especially this one y'all look how big this is i showed it to you in the previous video you were watching but look how big this these are your pink banana squash y'all we like these pink banana squash this is the first year i tried the pink banana squash we are fans of the pink banana squash now because of one thing it gives you a lot of food this is like um, a lot this is going to probably fill up a, a a zip a freezer bag so I am uh, happy about this, but this, these are the same two, this, these two are the same types of squash. So uh, that one is just one that has not gotten as big, the one at the bottom, but the one at the top has gotten huge. So I'm not gonna put it on top of anything. I don't wanna bruise anything with it. But um, let's go ahead and get it out and get started on 
getting this all sliced up and put it into this uh, pot that I have with this boiling hot water on the stove. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take these squash pieces out and I'm going to put them into this, to a pan of cold water. And this is going to shock them and that's going to help them retain their color and it's going to cool them down. Stopping the cooking process. Okay, so now I'm blanching my few carrots that I bought in. I'm gonna decide that I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put them in the freezer. It'll just take a small freezer bag for those. But I do have my two snacks that I got. My two, I think this is the, I'm not sure if this is a sweet 100 or something else, but it's delicious. It's probably a sweet 100, it is so sweet. These are delicious too, but they have a different flavor. It's more of an, it's a, it's a different flavor, it's sweet, but it's a different kind of sweet. Maybe a more acidic sweet, but it's delicious. So that was my little snack. I got some more of those over there. But I am um, blanching my carrots to go into a zipper bag. My squash is draining right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start to um, bag it up. I probably could pat it dry just a little bit more. I got a towel over here. Now I just pat it dry. Uh oh, found another tomato. So I think I'll eat this tomato. The flavor of that one was even different. Still delicious. I'm loving them. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna put these into some freezer bags. And then I'm gonna start bagging up my peppers. Y'all, I've been trying to figure out how I am going to um, put everything back up. Uh, before, I did not have my freezer bags right here, but since we're in that time of the year, that's what I'm gonna be doing a lot of. I decided to go ahead and put my freezer bags in here. I also have some plastic wrap, but these are some huge freezer bags right here. These are two gallon freezer bags. I really like these, but um, they're mostly like if you have, um, I mostly use those for meats. So like a lot of chicken or if you have a turkey or something like that, but I'm going to be putting these in some of these, um, I'm going to be doing, using the quart bags because this is the size that we'll mostly be eating the squash at. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bagged up. When you fill your bag, you want to get as much of the air out of your bag as you possibly can. And I just do it like this and just kind of squeeze the air out and then I don't make a big fuss about it. I just go ahead and do it like that. And you can see this kind of uh, vacuum out that extra air. And sometimes I mix my squash up. But this is not, I'm not mixing it right now. This is the patty pan that I'm putting in this bag. The other one was some of the uh, pink banana. And you can go ahead and write your date and what is in your uh, bag, on your bag with a permanent marker. It's best to start writing it before you uh, put your product in because sometimes you get moisture on there and you will not be able to get it to work. Okay, next I'm doing my purple beauty 
peppers and I'm just cutting around my seeds. And you could either uh, just go ahead and dice these up and put them into your bag or you can just put them in there like this or you could uh, do them in some strips in case you're going to be stir frying them and whatever it is that you're going to be doing with them you can just do them or you can just leave them like this and wait till you get ready to use them and then uh you know put them in whatever you're going to be putting them in for right now i'm just going to be putting them in just like this okay i went ahead and i uh cut my eggplant up and i'm going to be having this i'm fixing to uh batter that up i'm also going to batter a few of these parts of okra but I wanted to check some of the okra pods to make sure that they are not hard. Like this one, since it's so large, but it's not hard. And I'm going to just go ahead and put these into a freezer bag. And this one is hard. So the ones that are larger, you just want to check them out to make sure. These small ones like this, I'm not worried about them being hard. So I'm just going to place these into a freezer bag. The rest of those can go with my meal. And throw that shishito pepper in there. And then I still have this pepper back here that I wasn't sure about if it was okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go down the center of this pepper, cut it, and see if there is anything in this pepper. And that is not anything in it. It seems like that is like a uh, like a blossom end rock on a pepper. So that's what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this pepper in here. I'm going to also have that with my meal. I can give it a rinse. Let's give it a rinse in my knife of a rinse. Which I did cut off some decay. I'm going to go ahead and take those seeds out. I'm not going to try to save these seeds at the end of the season. I will try to save some seeds because those seeds are better if they are left in, in the fruit to grow and mature. And then you use them. Okay, so this is my, well, this is going to be our dinner. And I'm going to leave some of these tomatoes out i'm going to freeze a few of these tomatoes but most of these uh, especially the cherry tomatoes they're going to be left out well really i think i'll leave all the tomatoes out for now because a lot of these tomatoes still have not completely ripened so i don't even think i got enough to go into a zipper bag i'm going to leave all those out and then i'm going to put my cucumbers into the refrigerator and so it looks like i'm finished with my canning for the uh food that we harvested today so this is the harvest that i'm going to be adding to my freezer today these tomatoes will be on the uh, counter ripening and for fresh eating because i told you one of them got a tomato sandwich written all over it and then I got those cucumbers over there that I, I'm going to put in a zipper bag and I'm going to put those into the refrigerator also. And we'll use those for salads and fresh eating. So I hope that you all have enjoyed this video and that you will give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And go ahead and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.